We've been talking uh, a little bit about race relations the last few weeks, that's for sure. Well, a guy that is not really uh, loved by the African-American community would be uh, former, uh, f- I guess you could say, former congressman, right? Well, he, <laughs> um, he lost in the primary, so. Yeah. We're talking about Steve King. He said that uh, not all cultures contribute equally to society. He suggested that a, an electric fence should be put along the U.S. Mexico border. I'm sorry, I'm just laughing because this guy is an absolute nut job racist. Uh, the guy is literally a Klan member. And uh, he said if Obama is elected president, that terrorist would celebrate. I mean, uh, you know, I think uh, I could be wrong, but I thought uh, Wayne Allen Root said that as well. But uh, I could be wrong on that one, allegedly. But the guy joining us on the line right now, his name is Ed Fallon. He's an American activist, a politician, talk show host, and author. Uh, from the uh, state of Iowa. He was previously a Democratic candidate for governor of Iowa and the U.S. Congress and served as a member of the Iowa General Assembly from 1993 to 2006, and he runs the website FallonForum.com. This was also the gentleman that mixed it up with Joe Biden, and I I don't think he did anything wrong. I think Joe Biden was very rude to him several months ago, and that actually made national news, uh, that clip, which was— That was was right before the Iowa uh, caucus, and and Biden basically pointed at Ed's chest and said— Uh, well, buddy, I don't want your vote. Yeah, and that's well, that was, when we had him on back in yeah, January. That was that was that was beyond inappropriate. Ed Fallon joining us right now on the show. Uh, Ed, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Uh, recovering from my wounds from uh, from uh, Joe Biden's manhandling of me. <laughs> uh, I heard your brother is Jimmy Fallon. I don't know if that's true or not. Did you tell him to stop it with the blackface? No, but you know we probably are related because every all the Fallons <laughs> crawl out of the same bog hole in Southern Roscommon County in Ireland. So oh, I'm sure I see. I see. Okay. All right. So the fact that you have been so involved with politics in uh, Iowa, give me your first reaction on Steve King being outed. Well, I, you know, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, again, King and I served together in the Iowa legislature, and uh, I'm also not surprised that he continued to get reelected. And again, remember, he only won the first time. He only won by 19 votes. So that was a very contested Republican primary. But once you get in, it's, I mean, incumbents don't get beat too often. And King, for all of his crazy talk, personally, you know, he's a nice guy. You, you meet him and say, oh, what a nice guy. You know, he and I got along fine personally as lawmakers. So I understand why he continued to get reelected. But I also understand that, you know, after what happened last time with J.D. Schulpen, you know, a guy out of the blue nearly beat him in a district that is overwhelmingly Republican. That was kind of a wake-up call to the Republican establishment. And between that and King going off and saying the white supremacy, you know, what's wrong with that? <laughs> uh, between those, those Ed, two things happening, they decided Ed, they had to take him out. Ed, what does it say about society when a guy like Steve King can be voted into office? This is a man, I mean, there's a, there's a list I could go through here. I'll just name a few. You mentioned him uh, supporting white supremacy. He questioned what minorities have contributed to civilization. I mean, this guy, yeah. this guy has made so many awful comments about minorities. Uh, the Confederate flag was displayed on this man's desk. Does it get any worse than that? He might as well show up in Congress in a Klan outfit. I mean, wh- again, I'll ask, what does it say about society and some people in Iowa, and I don't want to bash your state, but what does it say to, uh, about people that voted for this guy? Well, one of the, uh, one of the most popular shirts in Iowa is, uh, one, it says, uh, sorry about Steve King. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, even, even the folks in the 4th District that he represents, again, which is a very heavily Republican district, you know, there's a lot of them, and I, I know there's a lot of good people there. They don't, they don't like what he stands for. And some of them even who will disagree with his crazy talk think, well, you know, but he still, he helped me with, name the problem, you know, because he's, he's very active. He's been very active on constituent service. Personally, he comes off as a nice guy. So I think a lot of people who don't share his racist and anti-immigrant viewpoints were still willing to look the other way and vote for him. That is until he nearly got beat last time and the Republican Party decided we need somebody else. I mean, I don't want to compare this to Donald Trump, but in this sense, I will. Well, do it. There yeah, are, what you just said is very telling to me. There are people that voted for him, and all the stuff that he said – and the racist things he said and, it, and, and, and the horrible things that he said, they're willing to put that aside, right, because of maybe some things that they've done, uh, you know, that he's done for them. Don't you feel like it's a very similar contrast 
to Donald Trump where uh, uh, not all the voters, I wish it was all the voters, but some of the voters who vote for Donald Trump have said, well, I don't like his rhetoric. I don't like the things he said, but I'm willing to overlook that and vote for him because of blah, 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 blah. Don't you think that it, it, it's similar in some ways, is it not? I think it's a little different because, you know, again, Steve King, up close, personally, personally, he's a nice guy. I don't think Donald Trump is ever a nice guy. I mean, I never, I, I don't have the same rapport with him, but every impression I have is he's a jerk down to the, down to the, down to the bone. I think with Trump, it's, I mean, I, okay, so I, I, you know, another former lawmaker and I who get along real well, he's very conservative. He's actually the head of the family leader. Um, and I, I, you know, he's a nice guy. He's a nice Christian guy. You know, he's, he's, he's just, he's a nice guy. You can't argue that. I asked him, how do you support somebody like Trump? He says, well, I really don't like him, but he's appointing people who are going to protect you know, the unborn, that's his, that's his issue, you know. And so I, I think with Trump it's a little different. I think a lot of it is maybe that and also the fact that people couldn't stand Hillary Clinton. Uh, and, I, I, you know, the more I, I talk to so many um, Trump voters who, well, they weren't really that big a fan of Trump, but they just couldn't stand Hillary Clinton. So <laughs> I think it's different. Okay, fair enough. Hey, Ed, I got a couple questions. First of all, refresh my memory. Is Steve King the one that uh, drank out of a toilet in a detention center <laughs> and then uh, said that the water was fresh and drinkable? No, that was me. <laughs> no, it wasn't you. <laughs> no, that no, was King, right? Okay. I don't know, actually, was it? I yeah, I think so. Was. I think he visited an immigrant detention center down at the border oh. and drank the toilet yeah, water, which right. was can the I same water clear? that the, the teenagers Can I be drinking? clear on that? Uh, I, uh, the next time I have diarrhea, uh, I hope Steve King uh, enters my bathroom and drinks the water. Well, you know, That's the, what I think about Steve King. You know the, the tank of a toilet they had, like, bubblers? Well, in, from where I'm from in Wisconsin, they call them bubblers. They had, like, a drinking fountain. Did they call them bubblers in Iowa, uh, Ed? Uh, sometimes. Some of okay, them. well, anyway. They had a drinking <laughs> fountain coming out of the back of the toilet that was for de detainees, and Steve King drank a glass of that, I guess. Anyway... But my other question is, I read this analysis of Steve King and his primary loss, and it was that after his, whatever his most outrageous comment was a few months back, they stripped him of all, the Republicans in Congress stripped him of all his committee assignments, therefore making him ineffectual. And that ultimately is what led to his loss, is that people figured, well, this guy's powerless. We've got to get a Republican in there that can actually get something done. Do you think there's any truth to that? Yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to that. Because, uh, you know, I mean, King has had primary opponents before. And they've never come close to beating him. Um, and some of them were strong candidates, and you know they would run on, run against him on his rhetoric and and his uh, you know terrible reputation. But I think the argument that hey, we need somebody who actually can represent us, not somebody who's been stripped of their committees and their power. I think yeah, I think that was, and that's kind of sad. That that's more powerful than than voting out a racist. <laughs> but um, you know that's I think that's where a chunk of the yeah, especially, especially the Republican electorate is that they they really they're willing to look away on some of those you know uh, you know socially offensive concerns, but they want somebody who's still going to fight for them on on the economy and healthcare and all those other things that are front and center in their life. Well, I, I think right now with Donald Trump, a lot of people are being labeled racist when they're actually just really capitalist, and they're much they're much more concerned with with how. The, the decisions that the president or in this case a congresswoman that makes or congressman makes that would affect their life in whatever whatever way do you think i mean i, I look at steve king and i think to myself this guy didn't i mean the last couple the things he said the last couple of years it really makes me wonder if he even wanted to be a politician i mean because he, he said so many overt over the top things either he was just trying to see the how crazy we think he could say without being actually voted out but do you believe that randy feenster has a chance to win uh the actual uh, seat I do, uh, you know, and I would say, I, you know, King uh, is blatantly honest. So he's probably more honest than a lot of Republican politicians who might feel the same way, but don't say those things. Uh, and so maybe in this case, him being honest is not very smart. But I think, I think it's, um, I, I think that's who he really was. He wasn't trying to be inflammatory. So you think that there are a lot of Republic? I want to see if I get you straight. You think there are a lot of Republicans out there that if, if they knew they weren't going to be uh, bamboozled, they would have a Confederate flag on their desk? I'm not sure if there's a lot, but there's enough to be of concern. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> telling. That, that is, that is, that's well, I mean, troubling. I mean, come on, Brian. What do you mean, come on? I'm you, going by what he just said. He right. lives in Iowa. Okay. What do you mean, okay? You, 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 actually, get, what, you want to disagree with him? You're, you're trying to paint the Republican Party uh, as, as racist no, right now. Uh, no, no. 
I'm going by what this gentleman just said. Would you like to repeat it again for J.D.? I know, I know what exactly he what he said. Okay, well, then why are you saying that? I didn't say that. I think it's troubling that anybody thinks it's okay to have a Confederate flag on their desk. And what Ed Fallon is telling us, that there's more than one person, if there wasn't going to be backlash, they would do that. And I find that troubling. Nowhere in this conversation would I ever say any time that all Republicans are racist or all Republicans are like Steve King. But I find it troubling that Ed Fallon just – hold on, hold on, was, hold on. It was telling. I, 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 think, I think it's awful. And, it's, and, yes, it is telling. And I will say why we're telling, that there are cowards in office on both sides. But particularly right now we're talking about the Republican Party, that what Ed is saying is that there are other Republicans, maybe in his state, certainly in the country – that would brandish a Confederate flag if they didn't think that it would cause them harm. And th- am I getting you right, Ed? I don't want to misquote you. Yeah, I, I would. I would agree with that. Yeah, and I, and I find I mean, that maybe telling. not a lot, but enough. No. Yes, exactly, and that is and that is very troubling. Ed, I want to give you uh, an opportunity here to talk a little bit about uh, your website because I think it's it's quite unique and different, and you have a ton of experience, as I said, as an activist, politician, a talk show host, and an author. Talk to me about uh, FallonForum.com. dot com. Okay, real quick, I want to make sure I answer the other half of the question. I think Steve sure. Sura has a very good chance to win that general election, although I think J.D. Shulton will be the strongest Democratic candidate we've ever put up against him. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, the Fallon Forum, uh, we, uh, it, it's, it's been a talk show here in Iowa since um, September of 2009, so we're going on to year 11 here. And uh, started off on a big station until that station was bought by one of the big um, conglomerates, that threw all the local talent and all the progressive voices off. <laughs> so I've been uh, on uh, smaller stations now, and actually I'm syndicated on two stations in Iowa and I think four or five across the country. So hey, Cool, cool. Congrats. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But, yeah, the, the idea is to um, try to provide a voice in the heartland that is progressive and uh, provide some balance to what you hear on the airwaves because, admit it, 90% of everything you find on the airwaves in terms of talk is of the Rush Limbaugh ilk. And... There's not a lot of balance or, in my opinion, sanity there. So that's our goal is to try to add another perspective, give voice to guests and opinions that don't get heard, and uh, try to broaden the conversation a bit. Well, Ed, my uh, producer is tapping me on the shoulder. Uh, He has one more question for you. Go ahead, Stein. Sorry, man. Um, I'm just a political junkie. Ed, you're very plugged. You're just a junkie. Yeah, right. Ed, you're very plugged into the political scene in Iowa. Iowa is an interesting state. Parts of it very deep red. Parts of it progressive, as you know. Just real quick before you let us go, make a prediction. The 2020 election, November, which way does Iowa go in the presidential? I think Iowa is going to narrowly go Biden. But um, I, will, I, I want to add a caveat. <clears throat> I'm not 100 percent convinced that Biden will be the nominee. You know, Neither am I. Got a conven- yeah. The convention coming up, and between now and then, the the hidden elite within the Democratic Party might decide, hey, this this guy's too risky. He's a placeholder. We're going to want somebody who we can bank on for the long haul. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised that if, it, if this is somebody other than Biden would be the nominee. But I do think there's a really good chance that, given the impact that the Trump administration has had on agriculture and in a lot of other areas, I think Iowa is – probably inclined to go Democrat this time around. Too early yeah. to tell, but that's my early prediction. Ed, I tend to agree with you, and I think, uh, but I think if it was Pete Buttigieg and Kamala Harris on a ticket, whether Kamala Harris was running for president or Pete Buttigieg was running for president and Kamala was his uh, vice president, I think that uh, Democrats would win in a landslide. I think they made a mistake. I, I respect Joe Biden a great deal. There were better candidates out there. You, are, uh, you and I are in complete agreement there. Uh, Ed Fallon, thank you so much for taking the time to join us, man. Really do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ed.